my rock bottom before the turning point was being malnourished, having no sleep, having nightmares every night when I tried to sleep, you know, panic attacks, suicidal thoughts, feeling like my life was over at 21, 22 years old, feeling like I wanted to die, feeling like I was already dead, feeling no true friendships with anybody because I felt like everyone around me, all they really wanted to do was get high, but really when the chips fell and I needed them, no one was there. I felt really alone. I, I didn't tell anyone what I was going through. So I felt just that I was hopeless, helpless, that there was, you know, there was no turning back. I felt like I had reached my limit and that I was gonna die and that I had no other choice but to just let myself die. And so that was a pretty scary place to, to be. And luckily I had the sense to call my mom in the middle of the night when I was out of my head and thinking I was dead and was gonna die. So I was really fortunate that I picked up the phone and called her because I think if I didn't I would be, I would be dead. She came to get me and grabbed me out of that apartment and drove me home to Pennsylvania, having no idea what I had been doing. Like in her mind, I was still this beautiful, young, fresh girl from Pennsylvania who wants to see her name in lights because every time she would call, I was, of course, I'm on the way to an audition, or I'm doing this, I'm doing that. I wasn't saying, oh, I'm snorting cocaine, and I'm swallowing ecstasy, and I'm going to clubs every night and not sleeping and having panic attacks. So it was essentially leading such a double life and I just didn't know how to how to stop it. It was this vicious this vicious cycle that I didn't know how to jump out of. I didn't have the I just didn't feel like I had the support. I didn't feel like I um, I didn't feel like I, I deserved it really. I felt just worthless and helpless and I really hated who I was at that point.